Why the hell do bodybuilding diets even exist? Like the chicken, broccoli, rice every two hours. It, it makes no sense. Or does it? Should we have a talk about it now? Gabriel, cue the intro. So one of the aged old debates is clean eating versus IIFYM, which is if it fits your macros, which basically means your set of macros you can fill it with whatever you want. If you want to eat pizza all day, as long as it fits your macros, you can. The clean eating bro diet is the chicken and broccoli every two hours, rice, potatoes. That's the that's the bro diet, no seasoning, that kind of stuff. That's the general consensus of both diets. Now I've done a lot of videos where I've talked about both of them, which one's better, what diets are better. If you guys want to check that out, the link is in the description and somewhere on the screen maybe. But after a lot of questions that I've been getting, where the hell did the bro diet come from? I think I have an idea. This isn't facts, this is more observations and I'm just trying to logically put things together. So I wanna hear you guys' views on this as well. So feel free to comment in the comment section and see whether we're on the same page. If not, then cool, but everyone's entitled to their opinion. So over the years, I've done both the IFYM and uh, the bro diet and I've seen very, very, very minimal differences in terms of like my condition and stuff, not for competitions but just in general for losing, you know, a little bit of, you know, the mini cut, that type of stuff. But let's take Roly Winkler, for example. Let's not talk about us mere mortals. Let's talk about the elite bodybuilding world, Kai Green, the Roly Winkler, and yes, they do take so, but we're not getting into that. We're talking about the food and why it exists. Now I've met Roly Winkler and we were sat down and I was asking him like, right, how many, like I was in awe, I was just like, I don't even know how you get that big. Like, can you can you give me some of, some of your muscle? And I was asking him, how many meals a day do you eat? And all that kind of stuff. And he's like, you know, eight to 10 meals, you know, sometimes five, 6,000 calories. That's not how he talks, by the way. This is my own impression. And the meals are pretty big. So they're not small meals. These are like eight to 10 kind of big meals. Big meals for me anyway. So us mere mortals, we don't, we don't need as many calories. We don't need the five, six, 7,000, 8,000 calories just to kind of like maintain or grow or whatever. Some of us do, but not all of us. So if it fits your macros, it is all right, especially if we're looking at quality food. We're looking at whole foods and that type of stuff. If we're looking at quality food, it's easier for us to get that food in. Okay, so are you still with me? Still with me. Now imagine if Roly Winkler had to do IAFYM, so this is tracking his macros on the go all the time for eight to 10 meals a day. And then he's got to focus on training, he's got to focus on water, he's got to focus on sleep. That is long. That is just long. Now let's take into account, when it comes to competing, especially at that higher level where, you know, a percent body fat can show veins more or show striations more than if you didn't have that one, if, than if you had that percentage body fat on top. Accuracy is everything. No stone unturned. Like accuracy is so, so key. Now I've been to places like Lidl and I've bought their packets of chicken, which says 210 grams on the packet. One of them had 180 grams. Another one had 230 grams. There's no consistency. So if you just take that and pour it in, and that's just plain chicken breast. We're not talking about the stuff like, um, I don't know, I can't even think of anything now, but things that have more ingredients. So like say it was a burger with this seasoning and this sauce and all that kind of stuff, and it has the macros on there, you're taking that at face value. When, when you're competing at that level, you can't take things at face value. You need to know. So he might go and buy like, I don't know, a, a burger or something and it says, oh, that's 1,000 calories, 20 grams of protein, blah, 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 blah. He eats it and, but then if you look at it, what if the person that put the ketchup on just went <clears throat> But on the next one he went <clears throat> Or if or he, he grated some cheese and on the first one he went <clears throat> And on the second one he went <clears throat> the consistency isn't there. Even my time competing, even when I competed, I needed to know everything. And I'm not, I wasn't anywhere near to that level. I needed to know that like for gram for gram, that everything was on point. That sometimes I would boil rice and if it stuck to the bottom, I'd need to boil more because I don't know how much is stuck at the bottom. I need to know how much is stuck at the bottom because you're stealing my gains. Accuracy. Because all that leads on to is the psychological mind mess of, oh, 
Well, if I had done that better, I probably would have won. Oh, if I had done that better, oh, I could have counted that a bit. And there's all these, like no stone unturned. I need to know that everything that I can control is under control. So, IIFYM out the window. Say he cooks his own meals and he decides that he wants to add this sauce and this seasoning and this splurge and this splash and all of this stuff and puts all of this stuff into the mix. But he has to eat eight to 10 meals a day. That is long. Eight to 10 meals a day, that's one meal approximately every one and a half hours depending on how long he is awake. Like say 16 hours, so he's getting eight, eight hours sleep. It's about an hour and a half every time he has to eat. Imagine a gourmet meal that you have to prepare just to eat to go to the gym. That is, it is long. Just thinking about it is making me tired. Four meals, three meals, I can manage. 10 meals, do one, mate. So, what's the easiest way to keep everything accurate so you know exactly what's going into your body, but also make it easy? I'm just gonna take chicken breast because chicken breast is, if you even if you look at like chicken thighs, chicken thighs, People always message me, if I take the skin off, does that mean that the fat, how much does the fat come down? And all of this, there's too many variables. Chicken breast, that chicken breast has minimal fat. Normally about two grams, that's it. I'm gonna put loads of those on a baking tray, along with some potatoes, and maybe boil some rice. I'm gonna put those in the oven, and I'm just gonna dish it out between all of my things with some veg, and that's it. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt to keep my sodium levels right, but I know exactly what's in there with minimal stress. So now I can focus on my training, my drink, my, not drink, not alcohol, naughty, water. I can focus on my water, sleep, all that kind of stuff without needing to worry about the food because the food, once you're in that mode, food is fuel. That's all you think of it as. You just eat it and then done. The only magic that I see in it is the quality of food. The same as if you put good quality fuel into a car, it will perform better. I'm not saying that it will perform badly with regular fuel, but it will perform better with premium fuel. You put premium fuel into your body, you're gonna perform better. You're gonna know exactly what's happening. And then the accuracy and convenience at that level, eight to 10 meals a day, that is a lot. That is a lot. When I had to eat seven meals a day, they were very small meals, but seven meals a day, I did the same thing. I tried to like minimize the amount of stuff that went in so I could track it, but it was just, it was not, I didn't just put salt on it. Like I'm African, come on. Like there's, there's no way that is happening. A little bit of seasoning or whatever, but it wasn't anything too drastic. And the only other thing that I can see that this would help with, you know, like having more meals a day or whatever is bloated, feeling bloated. Like sometimes you, you know you eat a big meal and you're just sat there for ages and your stomach just hurts like it's just big. And the only thing that I think that would help with would be keeping a tighter, a tighter waistline. And that's about it really. There's no magic to it. It's just convenient. Like I said, at that level. But I wanna know your thoughts. That's, that's, that was my thinking process behind it all. I wanna know what your thinking process is. Let's talk, let's communicate. I want to know. Come on, tell me. I don't even know what accent this is. Is this James Bond? Is it? I don't know. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, I'd like you to share it. I'd like you to like it. Smash the like button if, you, if, if you're into that kind of thing. And uh, I guess I will see you on the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'm out. Peace. Pooping excursion. I gotta pick up that person. In the trap. Pooping that workers. You're not a gangster, you're just an internet version.